Hello, welcome to the next installment of the read along from Undulation Relieve Stiffness and Feel Young. And also, Happy New Year. It's the first day of the new year. A lot of people are interested in the new year. We get more motivated to take care of ourselves. So I'm very pleased today to be doing the section on core undulation exercises. Being, having good core control is a good way to keep yourself safe and to be able to do a lot of other exercises in a, a productive way. When we think about the core, we think a lot about abs and some of our core is definitely in the abs. But in the structural integration way of thinking of the core, we think of the core starting in the inner arches, coming up through the inner legs, all the way up through that center abs, through the center of the neck and out the crown of the head. I'm gonna be fancy today. I have looked up some videos to show you. And so I'm gonna share my screen. Let's see if I can make this work. Share the screen and show you um, show you, try to show you this figure from the Heller work book, the client handbook that we give to our clients, of the idea of the core, like the core of an apple that comes all the way through the center of the body. And developing this awareness of your core is something that's deep inside, not just the outer abs, but deep around the spine is a good way to give your body lift, and that lift makes other exercise easier. But it's not what we typically think of. I found this great ab workout here, and let me show it to you. Um, he's showing a six-pack progression, and it actually yeah, does use some decent seconds. core, okay, but this is what we, we tend to think of, isn't it? Right? Yeah. And then take a look at the look on his face. He's not looking like he's having a lot of fun, and that's what we think, like exercise has to be that type of ugh. But I'd like to suggest that exercise can be joyful like this. Now, here we have a cute little baby. The baby is working on his core. Ooh, there's the diaphragm working, right? Babies all gleeful, happy, and doing just as much core exercise. And that is the um, progression that I'd like to think of when we're thinking of working on our core, is having this type of playful activity that's really engaging our body. Cute baby. So let's go through some of the undulation exercises from the core section here. So the first one is, um, oh, and I have to pause this. If I don't pause the baby, I'm spending too much time thinking of the baby and not enough time um, paying attention to what I'm trying to do here. So I'm not going in the sequence of the exercises in the book. I'm gonna go in a different sequence just so it's easier for me to do the recording. The first one I want to show you is coffee grinder. And we're going through the sequence of the core being abs and then starting to involve more of the body. So here we're working with the abs in working with our chest. So taking the chest forward and back. So this is involving not just the ab muscles, but also the diaphragm. As you go forward, there's a natural tendency to lift the chest. As you go back, there's kind of this, especially for me, this tendency to drop down. But if you think of keeping lifted both ways, then it's like, oh, that gets something really deeper inside. Now try side to side. So chest going one way and then the other, okay? Now, granted, we're working obliques here, which is just the outer core, but we're also getting deeper. Now let's do it, the coffee grinder motion. So we start forward to the side, back without dropping, and then around. Now this gets all the way down that cylinder, down to the pelvic floor, going both ways, trying not to drop down as you go to the back. So that's working the core and our first level. 
Now we're going to add a little bit more down into the pelvic floor doing the swing undulation. So swing, I'm gonna scoot my chair back here. With swing, we're gonna work more from the pelvis than from the ribs. And we'll lift the chest up and over, keeping a flat back, and then coming back onto the sit bones, and then leaning back and lifting the legs. You can't see that, but I'll show you a different view in a second. Okay, so coming up and over, and then back and lift your legs. You wanna make sure that you're on a very sturdy chair, right? So um, I have a great sturdy chair. It's nice to do this with your chair right next to the wall. Please don't fall off your chair, right? So coming forward, leaning back, lifting your legs, and then maybe leaning farther back. And here's what it looks like from the side. So coming up and over, lifting up nice and tall, and coming back. So that's the swing undulation. Next, I'm going to move the computer and come down to the floor and show you the remaining three undulations, which are done on the floor. So next, we're going to do the eel undulation. The eel starts to work more of the core muscles in the, around the spine. And we do this lying face down. And then it's little teeny, teeny, tiny motions of um, moving the spine from side to side. You may or may not be able to see it. We'll see how this goes. So we're here. I like to have my hands to support my head. You can bring them out here, which is more challenging. But just working with wiggling. Basically, you're lying down and you're wiggling, taking your hip towards your shoulder on one side and then the other. It's best to do it with your head not turned to the side. So, one of our ideas about core exercise is that it needs to have that oomph to it. But just like a baby who's playing with their toes, Right, just squiggling along the floor is engaging some different muscles, the deep core muscles. And um, it doesn't have to be that big to be effective. Now the next undulation is called Blooming Lotus. And this one is a little bit bigger. And now we're starting to draw everything together. So we have the abs, the pelvic floor, the diaphragm, the spine. And I'm going to describe it first and then I'll show you. We're working um, lying on your back and this looks very much like the baby, right? So maybe it shouldn't be blooming lotus, maybe it should be a um, baby playing with their toes. But um, there's a progression that I'd like to show you. So starting on your back with your knees bent and head on the floor, you just reach one arm and one leg out. And if that feels comfortable to you, then you can add to it one time. So it's nice to go opposite, one arm and the opposite leg or on the same side. Notice how that feels differently in your body. And then if that works for you, then you can start to lift your chest or lift your pelvis off the floor. So that's the third part of the progression. I'm not sure how well my voice will um, travel, while I'm doing this, so I might talk through it, but I might just show you. So here's what it looks like. First step is just working with an, a, a leg and an arm. Remembering a principle of undulation is keeping things non-repetitive and non-linear. So each time going a little differently. 
taking my leg at a different angle, arm at a different angle, maybe circling around. Being inventive. So stage two is adding two limbs at once, right? Maybe going across the body. Oops, there's across the body. And it can be a stretch or it can be coming together. And here I'm going into that third, third one where you can lift your chest or your pelvis, right? You can lift up. And the name of the undulation is Blooming Lotus with the idea that we're a lotus flower and one petal at a time is opening or several petals, right? So we can have all our petals coming together and then opening up like a beautiful flower. Each time having a different motion coming into angles if you'd like, remembering to stay in a joyful, fun, pain-free range. The final undulation in this section is caressed by waves. And it really doesn't look like anything. Um, the instructions in the book will talk you through the sensations you can feel, but it's lying on your back and imagining that you are on the ocean, being, I like to think of Hawaii, that's my favorite, right? The nice, wonderful, warm water. And the ocean water is just lifting you up little by little. And it's your core muscles that will make that motion in your body as you simulate being on the water. Core muscles, what I hope you get out of today's session, is core muscles aren't the muscles on the outside that you can see. Core muscles are the ones deep inside, like the core of an apple. And you don't have to um, strain to work them. As a matter of fact, the best way to get your core strong is to have fun activities that are non-repetitive, where your body's doing different things to get strong, just like we did how we got our strength to begin with in life when we were babies. Thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time.